In today's quick bite video, we will be diving into the copy to points song. The copy to points song is a great way to copy geometry onto points in space. So we would use it for, for example, populating vegetation on the ground, or maybe even just creating leaves onto falling particles. Let's start off by putting in a geometry node. Diving into our geometry node, we're going to lay down a copy to points sop. The copy to points sop requires two inputs, plus a geometry to copy, followed by target points to copy to. We're going to make this really simple and just create a grid, which will provide the points from which we will copy to. And we're going to do a pig head. That will be our source geometry. You can see now that we have our pig heads copied onto points on our grid. So let's dive into our copy to points node and look at the parameters. The first parameter we have here is a source group, which allows you to select the different groups from your source geometry if it has groups. So for example, I could select pig eyes and now I'm only copying the pig's eyes. I can also select individual points. Click this over here. I can, for example, just select individual points or even individual faces, primitives here, hit enter, and this is all that it's instancing. We can do the same with our grid. So in the grid, we could use groups or we can simply select certain points that we want, hit enter, and now we're only copying onto those points. Now let's clear this out and get back to what we have originally. Notice the orientation of our picket. If we look at our source geometry, it looks like it's doing what is right. However, once we go to our copy to point stop, it seems to be pointing upwards. And the reason why this is so is because by default, this is turned on. Transform using implicit target point normals with no point and attribute. So if you uncheck that, it is not going to use the implicit point normals. Now we can leave this turned on by default. There are two ways we can transform the size of our picket. Well, the first way is to simply put a transform node below our source geometry and adjust that to maybe 0.5. The second way, which provides us more control, is to adjust the attributes on the points. Let's do that by first deleting our transform node and then creating an attribute using the attribute create. Inside the attribute create, we will make use of a known attribute called pscale, which allows us to create the uniform scale of our objects. By default, you will see that everything seems to have disappeared. That's because the default value that's being written out right now is a value of zero. Let's change that to 0 0.5 instead. Now you can see that I have uniformly changed the scale of all of my pickets to be half of the source. Now there are a series of known attributes that the copy to point sort recognizes and listens to. These attributes will allow you to make all kinds of variations on your copies that include adjusting your scale, orientation, and even different material attributes. Now that being said, I will include a link to the documentation for more details on these attributes in the blog. Next, let's randomize the color of our pickets using the color sort. The color sort will create a CD attribute in the geometry spreadsheet that we can then use to vary the color of our pickets. Going back to our color sort, we can change the color type from constant to random and we shall now have random colors on our pickets. Now let's vary the orientation of our pickets. First, we go to our attribute create sop and create a new attribute. We will now explicitly create our normal attribute to control our orientation. We will change the type from float to vector and you will now notice that we have lost the orientation of our implicit normals because our explicit normal n right now has a value of 0, 0, 0. We can make our pickets face all in the positive x direction if we wanted to simply by putting a value of 1 in the positive x. 
Now that wouldn't be too interesting if we didn't have some variation. So we're going to put the attribute randomize node and we're going to create some random direction for our pickets. Adjust the attribute name from CD to normal instead. And now we can see that it has set some randomized attribute values to our normal attribute. You'll notice that the pig head seems to orient more towards the positive x, y, and z direction. And that's because the minimum value and the maximum value here of x, y, and z range from 0 to 1. Now we can obviously adjust this to be negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1. However, we can also go to the distribution parameter and click on the drop down and adjust that to direction or orientation. This by default gives us a 360 degree orientation. We can also specify a direction and some amount of cone angle. So let's click on the cone angle parameter. And now let's adjust our direction to be facing upwards. And we can adjust this cone angle to allow us some amount of randomization within a strict set of angles defined by this cone angle parameter. Coming back to our copy to point soft, you'll notice that there is a parameter called pack and instance. If I were to control middle mouse click and reveal the amount of memory that the copy to points node is um, using, it's using 43 megabytes. And that's because it's making an explicit geometry copy of every single picket. If you wanted a more efficient way of uh, instancing that is memory efficient, you can use the pack and instance method. When you click the pack and instance method and go back control click, you will see that the memory amount is so much less at 124 kilobytes. However, what you lose when you pack an instance is the ability to adjust points on each of the individual pickets. So if I were to click um, 2, for example, and adjust the points, I am no longer able to just adjust these individual points. They do not show up. However, if I were to uncheck Pack and Instance, you can see now that I can actually select the individual points. Finally, with the Copy to Points soft, you can adjust how attributes from your target points transfer over to the final output with the source geometry. So you can decide what attributes does it copy onto your source geometry, what attributes does it multiply or add. In particular, adding velocity from your, for example, particle simulation onto the source geometry such as maybe falling leaves is particularly useful if you want to generate motion blur from your falling leaves. I hope this quick dive into the copy to point stop has been useful to you and if you like it please remember to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notifications when new content from this channel comes out and don't forget to check out the resources found in the blog posts. I'll see you in the next video.